unbreakable God we believe God we believe for it from the impossible we we'll see a miracle God we believe God we believe for it thank you Jesus God, we believe, God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, God, we believe for it, from the impossible, we'll see a miracle, God, we believe, God, we believe for it, move the immovable, break the unbreakable, God, we believe, God, we believe for it from the impossible. We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, minister to your people on this morning. Give them real answers to life's troubles and struggles. Open our spiritual eyes. Open our spiritual ears that we can see and that we can hear from the Lord this morning. Lord, you said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let us hear from heaven this morning. Give us the richness of the wisdom of your word. Show us how to move. Show us how to act. Show us what steps we need to take to get a breakthrough, God, and to see change happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High God. How are you? So good to be back with you on this morning as we continue the series, How to Win, When It Looks Impossible. Do you know when you are backed in a corner, when your back is against a wall? God has given us keys and he's given us wisdom from the word of God on what to do in different situations and circumstances. Things that we can do and that we can apply ourselves to that will lead us to victory. And on this morning, we are going to talk about those things. Our topic this morning is two are better than one. And I want to say this to you right out the offset. Don't be, thanks, Kels, don't be a lone ranger. No one man is an island. Do not try to do it by yourself. There are times and places in your life and seasons in your life where maybe it's not time to share what it is that God has put in your heart and you've got to keep it to yourself for a certain time. I understand that. But when it is time for God to answer your prayer, for God to bring things to pass in your life, do not be a lone ranger. It's going to take more than you being alone to get the will of God accomplished. Are you listening to me? This is why even businesses in the corporate world, businesses begin to unite and join forces because one of them has something that the other is lacking. One of them's good in the area where another is weak in that area. And it's wisdom. Now let's go to the Bible. Let's see what the Word of God has to say about this. I want to take you into the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9 through 12. And I want to say this again. 
don't be a lone ranger. There are people who make statements like, I don't need nobody else. Well, you're a liar. The clothes you got on, somebody else made that. The car you drive, someone else made that. The house you live in, somebody else built that. The fridge that you were using to store your food, somebody else made the refrigerator. The food you were taking out of the fridge, somebody else raised it. The pot that you got to, let's not even let's we mention the pot. The stove that you about to turn on to put the pot on to heat the water in, the stove that you're using, somebody else built it. The pot you're about to use, someone else made it. You got to walk over to the kitchen sink and turn the water faucet on, somebody else made that. Hello, somebody. And someone's at the end at the water company making sure the water is going to get to your faucet. You need other people. Only a fool will make this statement and say they don't need nobody else. You know why you're watching this broadcast right now? Because you have a tablet, you have a smartphone, you have a computer that somebody else made. You need somebody. Oh, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost here talking sense to God's people. I said only a fool will say he don't need nobody else. You need somebody. Can someone lift your hands to heaven and say, God, send me people because I need somebody. I need somebody. Don't even, don't even start with me this morning and say you don't need. You need all the help you can get. Now, let's, now that we got that out of the way, <laughs> let's see what the Holy Ghost, let's see, what the, let's see what the Word of God has to say on the subject. Watch this. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9, two are better than one. Why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. Their return on the investment is better because one of them is not trying to do it by themselves. The Bible's telling you two are better than one. So I'm sorry for all the lone rangers out there. Why are you watching this broadcast? Because you need help. You need somebody. You can't do it by yourself. Come on, somebody. My God. Two are better than one because you, the Holy Ghost is showing this to me. Someone, someone is being healed right on the right side of that shoulder, right there on the right side of the arm. Someone has just been healed by the power of God. Just receive it. I don't know what was going on there, but the Holy Spirit have just healed you. Receive your miracle this morning. Receive it. Receive that miracle in the right side of your arm. Receive your miracle. Receive your miracle right now in the name of Jesus. Let us know who you are. Mighty miracle just happened there. A mighty miracle. No more pain is there. No more uneasiness is there. You can lift your hand all the way up over your head. You are free from that pain. You are completely healed by the power of God. Let us know who you are. Visit our website. We have a form that you can fill out. Submit that testimony to us. Let us know who you are. Thank you. So the Bible says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. The Lone Rangers are missing out on this right now. If you by yourself, you lacking. If you by yourself, you are struggling because God haven't ordained you to go alone by yourself. Look at Adam was in the garden. And you know what God said? Oh, some of you about to shout right now who believe in God for husbands and wives. God said, it is not good that man should be alone. Case closed. I rest my case. <laughs> I mean, God said this. It is not good that man should be alone. I got to get up. I got I to gotta get him a help me. And that's when God put Adam to sleep. You know, man, us men, we get in the way sometimes. God got to knock us clean out, get out of the way so he can work and bring the wife that we need, right? And he presented Eve to Adam when he woke him up. And that's how we get the name woman. Adam said, whoa. Man, <laughs> my daughter's laughing at me. <laughs> he said, whoa, <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys this morning. That's what I said when I saw Pastor Amy. I'm like, well, Lord, have mercy. All right, behave yourself, Pastor. Now watch this. I'm in love with that woman. Watch this, y'all. So two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. 
For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. You see, if you got connections in your life, friends in your life, partners in your life, if one fall, the other can, can lift him up, right? For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Listen to what the Bible says. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. God, have mercy on your soul if you collapse and it's just you by yourself. Remember the commercial back in the day? Uh, my kid's too young, but there used to be this commercial back in the day. This, this woman was home by herself, and she fell on the ground. And she said, help, I've fallen, and I can't get up. That's when they were selling those things. All you had to do was click the little button, and it would call emergency help for you. Are you, are you, are you following me? So, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he, he has not another to help him up. You need help. God did not ordain you to make it by yourself. Only a fool will say he doesn't need anybody else. The camera I'm using, somebody made it. The computer screens, the monitors we're using, someone else made it. That's why we on YouTube. They have a reach that we don't have by ourselves. That's why we on Facebook. That's why we on social media. That's why we just jump on all these podcast sites. Why? Because you got to partner with other people to accomplish the will of God. You can't do it by yourself, saints. Now watch this. Listen to what verse 11 says in Ecclesiastes 4. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. A threefold cord is not easily broken. You need somebody in your life. That's why even Jesus even said it in Matthew 18. If any two of you shall come together as touching anything on this earth that they ask, Jesus said it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. You need help. God send Aaron to help Moses fulfill the call of God. God place Elisha in the life of Elijah to help serve Elijah to help him carry out God's work. God put Joshua in the life of Moses. Come on somebody. He put Esther in the life of Mordecai. Do you see the power of partnership? David and Jonathan were allies. Jonathan helped rescue David from King Saul trying to kill him. You got to have partnership. You got to have people in your life. You have to have friends. You have to have allies. My father understood the power of what it means to have allies in your life. My dad never tried to do it alone. He always partnered with other people. There's a lot of wisdom in it because it's biblical. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Let me, let me, let me, share, let me share a little secret with you in Pastor Sean's life. Anytime I had failure in my life, I could trace it back to one main reason. I lack counsel in that area. I tried to do it by myself. Every time I failed, it was because it was something in my life that I didn't get, that, that I didn't consult about it. I didn't surround myself with the people who were smarter than me in that area and didn't have enough insight. And when you don't have other people, you got to realize the more eyes around you in some situations, the better. Because other people can see stuff that you can't see. Other people know stuff that you don't know. And this is why you need people in your life because you can tap into the genius of someone else who is strong in an area that you know nothing about. Quit trying to go it alone. It's not going to work. So the Bible says, when I feel the Holy Ghost on this this morning, God's helping people. Where no counsel is, I feel the glory of God. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. 
Proverbs chapter 24, verse 6, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there's safety. The word safety right there means it leads to victory. It leads to deliverance. It leads to salvation. Think about this. Jesus, God in the flesh, realized the work was too great. And what did he do? Chose him 12 disciples to help him carry out the work and the will of God. Even, the, even God in the flesh realized only a fool's going to try to do it by themselves. I've got to connect with others. And the Bible says in Mark 3, 13 through 15, And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. He realized he needed help. And Jesus reached out and got help because he realized he couldn't do it alone. He couldn't do it by himself. Now, the case is closed. God's wisdom, Christ is the wisdom of God in action. And the wisdom of God in action said, you need help. He didn't use his own boat. He used Peter's boat for Peter them to take him from one place to another. Why? Because they had something he didn't have. Yeah, we know he made the boat. We know all of that. But I'm talking about as a man, he realized I've got to connect with other men who have access to things I physically don't have access to. You got to wisen up. You, you, you're not spiritual. You're not deep. You don't sound spiritual. You sound foolish. To make statements like that. I don't need nobody else. The devil is a liar. You absolutely do. When I'm traveling to go do a crusade, I have to board a plane. I have to go to the ticket counter and check in. Even if I purchase my ticket online, somebody's behind it. Someone owns that company that I'm purchasing that ticket from. I got to go through security. I got to go to the ticket counter. I need people all the way. When I get on the plane, I'm hungry. I need, I need the stewardess to offer me something to eat. Come on, somebody. Don't try to do it by yourself. You're not deep. You're not spiritual to say, I don't need nobody. Th that's a trick from the enemy. The enemy wants to isolate you so he can confuse you and defeat you. Because by yourself, you're going to get wiped out. You know, that's what those pack of wolves do when they attack those dead or different types of animal. They try to pick one of the weak ones off, try to separate try to separate the weakest one from the rest of the flock. And if that, if that sheep is separated from the flock, there's power in unity. Whilst all of them are running together there, there's enough of them to probably trample those, that little pack of coyotes. But they, they, and the coyotes, no, all of them together is just over, I, we did be overwhelmed with the force of them. But what they try to do is they try to split one or two off by themselves. And then they can ravage them because they don't have the help of the entire flock there. Why is it not saints? Humble yourself. Don't try to go it alone. You ain't that powerful. I said, you ain't that powerful. Even though God placed his Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you still need help. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost, and he went and got help. That's wisdom. That's the example we need to follow. You need help. You need help. That's, that's the reason some of you have failed miserably. You lack counsel. You lack making connection with other people. Admit how weak you are. Admit it because every one of us has weakness. Admit it and wherever you're weak, get the people who are strong in those areas. Surround yourself with people who are smarter than you. Surround yourself with people who can help you accomplish what you can't do by yourself. 
and watch what God will do. Oh, the Holy Spirit. Come on. I want, I want to hear from you this morning. I want to hear your comments. I want you to communicate. Talk back to me. Is this message helping you? Talk back to me. I want you to type below this video. Let me know what the Holy Ghost is saying to you through this message. Let us know how God is straightening out your thinking, renewing your mind. He's showing you better. Talk back to Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy. We read your comments every morning. First thing in the morning. As we do in our devotions before the Lord, as we get done praying, we go through your comments. We want to hear from you. God is a good God. He can do anything but fail. What a God we serve this morning. God is a good God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He can do anything but fail he has moved so many mountains out of my way because god is a wonderful god god is a good god god is a good god he's a great god he can't do anything but fail. He has moved so many mountains out of my way. Because God is a wonderful. Father, bless your people with wisdom, with knowledge, with understanding. Help your people to be willing to humble themselves and admit, I can't do this by myself. Move on them this morning. Stir them. Show them the error of their ways. Point them in the right direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity now to support the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. To do so, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash seanpinder ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. The ministry cash up address is the dollar sign, Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888, and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries. P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Remember to share this video with at least five of your friends that you know need a word from God. They need a word of encouragement. They need direction in their life. Share it on LinkedIn, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Facebook, Facebook Messenger, Periscope. Not Periscope, sorry about that. Share it on Pinterest. Share it on Twitter. Share it on all those social media sites. Share it, share it, share it. Help, me, help us to get this message around the world of the gospel of Jesus. Never forget, me and my beautiful wife, Pastor Amy, we love you. We appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you again on tomorrow as we continue this series, How to Win When It Looks Impossible. God bless you. Bye-bye.